update. We're approaching the one year anniversary. Let's see how this goes. All right, so over the last month or so, I actually had to take my uh, rain catchment system down. It's full of city water right now, but I got the top off so I can ventilate the chlorine because uh, we have no rain in the foreseeable future. So I just got it back up. I had to take it down in order to get the new fence installed. Uh, I actually got my walkway firmly in place the way it's supposed to be now and I translocated all of the uh, solar system components. I now have a solar gen solar generator out here. I got the battery and the charge controller out here in the box. I just built this yesterday actually. So it's, it's really simple, huh? You just got a battery, charge controller, and since the wire is shorter, I'm not having to bring the charge all the way into the greenhouse. It'll be a bit more efficient because DC power is not efficient for lengths of the wire. So that 100 watt solar panel will be able to charge a little bit better. And I did have a mount for the uh, 15 watt solar panel here on top, but I took it off. It was right here. I was going to mount that, but I changed my mind. I'm going to save that for later. And the reason why I did that is because my dog yesterday, actually I was playing with her out here and she ran into the wiring that was down here at the bottom and then ripped I got tangled up, she's running full speed and started ripping it apart. And then when she got tangled, she freaked out and ran even harder and ripped the wires off of everything in the greenhouse. So freed up some floor space here. I still got still got the uh, over over drainage protection relay right here and 12 volt outlet in here. And I still have that one small ring of wires coming from there from the solar system. All right, onto the uh, actual aquaponics system. As you can see, I planted this out like the end of the first week last month, so it's probably three and a half weeks into growing right now. And everything's doing great, even though we've had a lot of cloudy days. Everything's reaching for the sun. Uh, my jalapeno pepper plant, after I, uh, I don't know if you can see all these peppers or not, it's just loaded with peppers. After, every time I take a harvest off, Basically, you can see it's flowering out a little bit here and there, but it, basically it's putting all this energy into growing peppers. So as soon as I come through and take a big, huge harvest off these jalapeno plants, which by the way, everything in here looks like it's doing great now. The pH has come down. Nothing looks like it's low in nutrients. But uh, after I harvest the jalapenos, then you'll see another flush of flowers come out, followed by another flush of peppers. Uh, that cherry tomato plant that I had started, that was like right here, has now grown over here, around, this is just in the last month and out, out all the way to this point and you got these runners coming up. I'm not, I'm not pruning it or anything. I'm letting it do its own thing. Every, and even the armpits have armpits and everything's hitting the roof. It's amazing. This thing is put on like probably 10 or 12 feet worth of growth just in three weeks. This is crazy. Uh, the butter crunch lettuce looks like it's doing great. It's reaching for light though. Everything's competing against each other. so. But I've been fighting my wife to keep it from coming out here and harvesting it. Uh, the one little uh, goji berry cutting I put down here, it's doing really well. Here it is right there. See that right there? It's doing really well. It's just buried right now. I'll try to get my wife to harvest this letters first. The temperatures at night have been getting down to the 40s outside and they usually stay in the 50s or 60s in here. Uh, even my strawberries, everything. Like, foliage can't really get any better looking than this. Uh, they've been sending out runners like mad and I'll keep pinching them off like this right here This is the runner I pinched off and then it sends out another runner off of that runner So I keep having to fight that but I'm trying to encourage it to flower and make fruit which it's starting to do now So it's gonna be awesome. And I've got strawberries all through there. Uh, this is my romaine lettuce You can compare this to the one in the bed Here's my hand for reference and size. It's pretty good And here is the romaine lettuce in the bed, which Honestly, we had a hurricane come through, so that blew it all over and tore it up pretty good with the wind. And then me in here working a bunch, I've been in here tearing up the lettuce too, so. This lettuce has been having a hard time. And I only watered it once this month, so. 
But the uh, bell peppers are all looking great still. Lost a few more branches in the hurricane. But it's still sitting on peppers. Still getting a lot of peppers off of this thing. There's peppers like every, it's a crazy amount of peppers. It's just like the belt, the uh, jalapeno pepper plant. You take off the harvest and then boom, 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 boom. boom. There's a bunch more peppers that I start setting on. You can see a flower in it here too. Uh, like the branches that I let fall over, actually, I'm letting it do its own thing to you. It's starting to send out more branches coming up, which are making even more fruit. And it's supported by the fish tank over here now, so that's doing good. I uh, reinstalled my, my light for the winter that was this was supporting the uh, tomatoes growing, but originally it had this light in here, so now it's back. So usually when I come home from work, it's dark now because it's, you know, shorter days and all. So I can come in here and check everything out. Uh, I uh, I built this right here. This right here looks like a NFT system, but it's actually a deep water culture system because the water level is just below the top. And it's got about 200 and some odd gallons of water flowing through it every hour. And it's using the water that is picked up from the bottom that's clean and been filtered by the beds already from going from the pump going there and then draining into here which i've lowered this tank now yet again i moved it one more time and took off the insulation on it you can see the amount of water flow that's going through it through those rafts or whatever they're called whatever you want to call them nft deep water culture um all the fish are doing great uh the water's getting colder now it's Let's see what it's hovering at today. It's hovering around just below 70 degrees. I don't know if you can see that. So 50 to 75 degrees is optimal for lettuce. Everything's doing great. Uh, the kale is also taking off over here. It's doing great. Uh, the basil has bounced back. Actually, when it when I cut the first cut that stuff off, uh, not too long ago. Uh, it started growing and then I had some caterpillars come through and tear it up. I didn't even, I've never even saw them before, so I never did see them. So I don't even know uh, what kind of caterpillar it was, but it's gone now. And then the bush is bouncing back. It's already trying to throw out seed heads that I've been pinching off. Um, up here, instead of growing lettuce for now, I've actually used it as another attempt at cloning. Uh, so I got some more strawberry uh, crowns that I did throw in here from the yard. Even the one that had like zero roots on it is starting to throw out roots. So it's doing good. And then I got uh, everbearing mulberries cuttings that I put in here. They've dropped all their leaves now, but the wood is still green. Let's see here. And it's starting to get those little knots on the, on the stick. So it's gonna throw out roots soon. See how green that wood is still. And uh, so those will look like they're going to survive and do well. Let see here. And then all my goji berry cuttings, every single one of them is doing awesome. This one right here is protected from the leaves, so it's like one of the few that held on to its leaves. This one and this one held on to its leaves. But these things are... And then this one right here, and that one right there, dropped all their leaves almost immediately. But look at them, they're busting, busting back out. It's crazy like them, how easy these things root. Look at the roots this thing's already put on. And you can see uh, when I first built this, I had the water coming out of this tank and into here and it was quickly filling it up with uneaten fish food and, and poo. So there is poo floating around in there right now. But look at the crazy amount of roots this thing's putting on. Let's see if I can clean them off. There you go, look at that. Isn't that crazy? I've only done that in like just a couple of weeks. So. Goji berries are extremely, extremely easy to clone, and I paid like 20 bucks a plant for those, I think. 20 or 40 bucks, depends on what size you get. Uh, those are sweet life goji berries, and then uh, I have some big life goji berries I'm gonna try to clone next. I look forward to putting those. I might actually put those in, nah, I probably won't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to clone some of the big life goji berries next, and I'm gonna try to see about cloning this Meyer, improved Meyer lemon tree. Uh, this thing is, is pretty much an ever-bearing fruit tree. Uh, once the fruit ripens on the tree, it lasts like five months. It can hang there and it just gets sweeter and sweeter. It's like the premier cooking lemon. And as soon as you pick off all the fruit and everything, it flowers again. So it like, it just, it's, it's just always flowering. It flowers like two or three times a year and it is always just trying to set on fruit. Uh, 
Last year, last winter, I had a, an issue with uh, grass and weeds growing through here, so I ripped all that out, upsized the pot, and actually put some oregano down there. So I have oregano understory. It's not in my aquaponics system anymore, but it's in my greenhouse. And then, uh, so that's pretty much what's going on in here right now, guys. Uh, it's amazing how easy, now that I'm done messing with all this stuff and rearranging everything, so aquaponic systems is an investment in time and money to set up, but on the back side, you save so much time and work. You're not having to weed and till and fertilize and all that good stuff. That it's uh, very much worth it. And uh, even though the temperatures in the, this area up here gets into single degrees sometimes during the winter time, uh, and now my telemetry is only good down to 25 degrees, it has actually seen the temperatures in the teens in this greenhouse. Back before I had all this aquaponic system in here, uh, this greenhouse would cool down really quick at night. And that Meyer lemon tree actually survived temperature in the teens when it's protected in the greenhouse. So there's no wind blowing on it and all that. So it should be doing even better now that i got an aquaponic system in here. Uh, everything looks good down here. There's Actually, we came out here last night with a flashlight with the kids. And there's like four bullhead minnows that uh, I never uh, feed, but they're, uh, they're thriving and growing rapidly in there. Isn't it amazing like, how this bed went from me, me demolishing it like three and a half weeks ago to looking like this right now? It's amazing. And just one more thing I wanted to talk about when I ripped all that stuff out of here uh, a few weeks ago and started planting my new lettuce and all that good stuff and the kale in there. Uh, the actual uh, nitrate or nitrites and ammonia in the system stayed exactly at zero and not read, readable. However, the nitrates actually uh, went from not readable to about 10 to 20 parts per million, which the fish can actually handle a whole lot more than that. But uh, that's the plant available nitrogen. So uh, that's something about the aquaponic system you got to figure out how to do over time is not rip everything out at once always have something growing in there which obviously I had the basil and the peppers still going and it's tomato plant which benefited from all that nitrogen <laughs> but uh and the, and the strawberries but uh you know, basically I did come back and uh I took off one of the feed cycles from the goldfish tank you can back off the feed a little bit and I wasn't too concerned because it was still well within limits but uh and it, the water's getting colder now too, so the fish don't need as much food. But uh, just something, something to be make a middle note of is to check that water after you rip out a lot of plants like that. So all, everything else was well within limits and stable. And I, I still haven't checked my pH in a few weeks. I need to check it and see where it's at now. But according to my plants, they love it. So I still need to check it for the fish's sake. It looks like we're having some stuffed bell peppers tonight. Look at these things. These things are solid.